dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Thanks for staying up late with us. Governor Andy Beshear vetoed a high profile bill that would have banned gender affirming health care for minors, but lawmakers could still override that veto next week. Transgender advocates organized a protest today to show their opposition to the bill. Grayson Passmore has more from the display. It's a controversial bill, one some call anti-trans legislation. Senate Bill 150 addresses multiple transgender issues. It does not require educators to use a student's preferred pronouns. And as it was passed last week, it prevents health care providers from performing gender changing surgery on a minor. This is our legislature stepping into the lives of parents and children that they have no need to do that. Doug Price is the grandfather of four, one of whom is trans. Friday, he joins a small group with Progress Kentucky traveling in a caravan from Lexington to Berea in hopes of showing state legislators their support for trans rights. The good thing about our situation is uh, her parents fully support her. She has the capability of having getting good medical care and that kind of thing. But there are a lot of people who are not in that same situation. Just hours before the caravan left, Governor Andy Bashir vetoed Senate Bill 150. There's no question that all of the uh, evidence out there, all of the medical groups say this will uh, increase uh, teen suicide. And we ought to be preventing that, not causing it. Following the veto, Attorney General and gubernatorial candidate Daniel Cameron said in a statement, the governor's action not only sets a dangerous precedent for our children's future, but also endangers their health and well-being. While bill opposers like Price feel the veto does just the opposite. If this law goes into effect, there will be trans children who will commit suicide. In Lexington, Grayson Passmore, WYMT Mountain News. Now again, lawmakers can still vote to override the governor's veto next week in their final two days of the legislative session. Republicans have enough votes to do so because of the supermajority they hold in the General Assembly. We'll, of course, keep you updated on what happens next. Yesterday, Governor Bashir signed a school discipline bill trying to defuse classroom disruptions. House Bill 538 gives school administrators the power to choose how they want to discipline unruly students. Under the legislation, if a student disrupts class three times within one month, they can be suspended. Principals can require review of classroom issues with the teacher and students' parents to determine a course of action or remove the student from class for the remainder of the year if their presence is deemed chronically disruptive. Some believe this bill will provide relief for teachers, but others worry it will unfairly impact minority and disabled students. 538 is really just so subjective. You know, what's would be what I consider a threat who is going to be completely different than what someone else who who may not look like me and they may not be black will, will consider a threat. Under the bill, school districts can also expel a student if evidence shows they pose enough danger. The University of Pikeville Theater program is preparing for its next show, the first campus production since Macbeth in the spring of 2020. WIMT's Buddy Forbes has more from the songs and steps the students hope would make Charles Schultz smile. The revitalization of UPike Theater. What? We're back, baby. What? We're back. <laughs> Students at the University of Pikeville are back in the spotlight. Let's go. Everybody it puts a little bit of pressure on you um, because this is the first show we've done in a long time, but hopefully it helps us build the theater program here. For the theater program's first show since the pandemic began, the Pikeville crew is taking on the Peanuts cast. I, I'm so excited to do Charlie Brown. Um, it's a musical that's been on my bucket list to watch, and, so, and now I'm performing it, so... With a mission to reinvigorate the program, now that the major has been established at the university, by reintroducing its talent to the community, off Broadway, or at least off campus. And there has 
been nothing compared to the first production after after COVID. I think it's such a great opportunity to kind of bring people back together uh, and bring back the theater program at UPI. Putting the work in now on rehearsal spaces before taking the stage at the Appalachian Center for the Arts. To see kids just light up, like they, they're able to express themselves in a way that you, they just can't normally. And it's just, it's so great. Hoping you're a good man, Charlie Brown, will provide a good night for families. It's a great production for kids and adults alike, uh, just for the magic of theater. Stepping and singing for the program and the Peanuts in Pikeville. Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. The public show premieres March 31st at 7 p.m. and April 1st and 2nd at, or, or April 1st at 2 and 7 p.m. U Pike students are admitted for free. Tickets are $5 for anyone without a student ID. School officials in Lecture County are still working hard after the floods last July. Burdine Elementary and Jenkins received heavy damage as a result of the floods, but students returned to the classroom by late September. During the 2022-23 school year, crews began rebuilding new windows, doors, furniture, adding fresh paint, and more. Superintendent Damian Johnson says although the flood was destructive, better days are ahead. We want to provide our students with a uh, safe and secure learning environment. And we want to provide them with um, um, learning opportunity in a school that they can be proud of. So um, this is a horrible way to get there, but I just look at, it as a, look at it as an opportunity for us to build back better for our students to provide them with better than they had in the past. Johnson added reconstruction of the school's preschool building will begin within the next couple of weeks with more work to do after students leave for summer vacation. A Southern Kentucky congregation will be working to rebuild part of their church after a major fire yesterday. A fire swept through part of the Cornerstone Baptist Church, destroying several offices and classrooms, but staff say the sanctuary was spared. There is no word on what started the fire, but officials believe it will likely be ruled accidental. They believe they have pinpointed where in the building it started. While the building is damaged, they, they say they will press on as Easter approaches. People is a lot what makes up the church. Um, there's a lot of sentimental things, the memories and stuff in the building itself that everybody has, but at the end of the day, it's the people and we'll, we'll be stronger when we come through on the other side. The fire and the response itself caused some major traffic issues yesterday and part of Somerset's electric service was even cut off during the fire. Officers in La Follette, Tennessee arrested three men after serving a search warrant at a house around 11 this morning. Officers say they found drugs in the home. Greg Riggs, Tony Evans and Scotty O'Rick are all facing drug charges. Officials say the same home was searched in late February, but the sale of meth did not stop which is why another search was conducted. A woman in Boyd County was arrested and charged with the death of her two-year-old child. More than one month after the child's death, the mother, Brittany Copadonna, is behind bars. On February 14th, Kentucky State Police were called to a home just south of Ashland where the child was found unresponsive. Trooper Shane Goodall says during the investigation, they found the child ingested fentanyl and the cause of death was deemed an overdose. The child is just two years old. It's, its immune system is extremely down, and I couldn't imagine the effects that a little bit of fentanyl would have on an adult, a little less a child that young. Copadonna is charged with manslaughter, wanton endangerment, and possession of a controlled substance. Trooper Goodall says she remains the only person charged with a crime, but the investigation is still open. Students and staff at the Floyd County School of Innovation Agriculture Program received a visit from Commissioner of Agriculture Ryan Quarles on Friday, showing him the skills they are learning as future farmers of America through their container farm. Quarles says he was very impressed with the technology and tools these students are receiving in high school. Agriculture knows no age limits, that anybody can get their hands dirty and produce some food, and in this case, make a career out of it. But I've been through a lot of school systems across Kentucky. Uh, I definitely would say this is on the leading edge and hopefully on the path towards expansion as well. Quarles also acknowledged that this week is Nat National Agriculture Week and urges you to visit your local farmer's market and thank a farmer. 
Still mild in many parts of the mountains tonight as we await our showers and storms pushing on in from the west, and they are packing quite a punch out to our west. Far southern parts of the region still near 70 at this hour. Further north, where the severe weather threat is less because we're seeing those temperatures in the low to mid-50s region-wide. All through the mountains right now, not much happening, but we're already starting to see the leading edge of some of those showers pushing into parts of Wayne County. We head out to the west, a lot of steady rain, thunder and lightning south of the Louisville area, but some of those thunderstorms crossing near Bowling Green right now and further to the south, a big time line of showers and thunderstorms. They are still severe as they're pushing through East Tennessee right down I-40 right now. In fact, we'll put a track on this and you see, and I'll step off so you can kind of see where we're headed. Monticello within the next uh, hour and a half or so as we head toward London by about 240. Middlesbrough by about 3 and Hazard by about 3.30. Should this continue moving at 55 miles per hour the way it is right now as those strong storms continue to push through. I'm going to back up a little bit and talk about something that appears to have happened further off to the south. Uh, this storm right here, you can't really see the definition that well on it, but it looks like a rather large and dangerous tornado went through the town of Amory, Mississippi not too long ago. And it, based on the radar appearance, that was a rather large tornado. So spare a thought and a prayer for those folks tonight. It's been a rough night down in the Magnolia State, and that will continue further to the south. That's where the severe threat continues, the level three risk in the Alabama and Middle Tennessee. For us, that is a level one risk for the most of us. If we're going to see a warning, I think it's going to be west of I-75, places like Monticello, Somerset, and Whitley City, and over toward Williamsburg. However, I don't think it's a huge threat as we head into tonight. Timing it out. 1, 2 o'clock. Here comes those storms, or here come those storms into Somerset, Monticello, Stearns, Pine Knot as we head toward 2, 3 o'clock. Places like London, Williamsburg, Barberville into Manchester, Harlan, Hyden, Hazard up to Jackson, and in the Kentucky River Valley as well. As we head towards 3, 4, 5 o'clock, they're pushing east to places like Whitesburg, Pikeville, and uh, further on to the east. Phelps, Elkhorn City on out of Pike County in southwest Virginia. And by the time we head into the morning hours, we're done with its showers. But the winds stay gusty upwards of 35 to 40 miles per hour as we head through the day on Saturday. A wind advisory is out for everybody but Dickinson and Buchanan, but go ahead and act like you're under it. It's going to be a breezy day all through the region. It's not what we had a couple of weeks ago, but it's still going to be a rather breezy one. Community Trust Bank 7 day forecast where the weekend is always in view. We dry out after our morning storms today. Well, tomorrow, today, Saturday. <laughs> it is currently Saturday. Uh, we're still near 70 Sunday and Monday. Late chances Monday night into Tuesday, uh, but that's uh, going to be uh, drying out as we head towards midweek before that next shower chance moves toward us late week. Steve? Evan, thank you. Tree damage was reported in some areas earlier today as thunderstorms rolled across the region. In the Shoals area of Wayne County, West Virginia, people say they woke up around 5 a.m. to the sound of strong winds. Trees were toppled, some onto roofs and across roads. A vacant mobile home was also flipped. One man described the scene. It was a loud noise um, really quick, so we got up and about 10, 15 seconds later, it just felt like it was a train, like a subway station train just coming at the house. Obviously, that was a woman. And here in Perry County, uprooted trees and snap trees were reported in, uh, in some locations. Now, Viper Elementary School had to dismiss early because of a power outage in that area. Hall of Fame high school coach John D. Wilson made an impact on coaches across the state throughout his career. One of those was Billy Hicks, the all-time wins leader in Kentucky Boys High School basketball. Hicks started his career in the area and took advice from Wilson. Even before Hicks started coaching, he remembers Wilson's sympathy after an accident in a pickup game. I know when I first got out of college, we were, we were playing pickup ball at Kaywood and one of his best big men uh, was playing with us and dislocated his arm. And I thought, gosh, John, he's going to kill us. But he never said it. He never said a word about it. Uh. Hicks also said Wilson helped craft him into the coach he later became. Wilson died earlier this week at the age of 84, and his funeral was held Friday. Well, thanks so much for joining us tonight and staying up really late with us. Courtney Lane Brewer and Nate Johnson will be in next with highlights and scores from night two of the NCAA Sweet 16. That and more next on Sports Overtime. Have a great weekend. What makes for excellence in heart care? It's